PE, the um, it hit uh, in the U.S. in 2013, and before that, uh, as you mentioned, the producer has already uh, been studying measuring the disease. And one way of doing that is to use the monitoring project. So, Dr. Bob uh, Morrison, uh, they started the Morrison Swan House monitoring project in 2011, and since then, um, it monitored PERS. That's the in initial. Uh, purpose. And uh, luckily or unluckily, in 2013, we were able to catch uh, the whole wave of PED in the U.S. When it hit it the first year, uh, it spread very rapidly to uh, about 30 states and um, affect almost 50% of the rating herds. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me in our podcast studios this week is Dr. Xiaomei Yue. Dr. Yue is a postdoctoral associate at the University of Minnesota. Xiaomei, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. It's a pleasure to have you on here this week. If you would, please uh, start with an introduction for the audience so they can get to know you a little bit. Yeah, hi, Clayton. Thank you for inviting me again. Truly my honor to share our recent study result. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Xiao Mei Yue. I'm a postdoc from the University of Minnesota. I work with the Morrison Swan House Monitoring Project with Dr. Cesar Kozo. So I work on veterinary epidemiology study on PERS and PED. I'm an animal health economist. Yeah. You guys do some fantastic research up at the University of Minnesota, and we're here today to talk about some uh, research that you've been doing. But let's kind of start with the overall topic, you know, the area you've been researching. You've been working um, uh, on uh, PED and specifically PED eradication from sow farms. And uh, uh, Xiaomei, you know, we have a saying, uh, you can't manage what you don't measure. You know, metrics are very important to understanding, are we getting better? Are we staying the same? Are we getting worse? And in the pig industry, we love our metrics. So let's maybe start about PED eradication and, and measuring our success. How, how do producers uh, assess their efficacy with eradicating PED from a sow farm? Yeah, thank you, Clayton, for the question. So PED, um, it hit uh, in the U.S. in 2013. And before that, uh, as you mentioned, the producer has already uh, been studying measuring the disease. And one way of doing that is to use the monitoring project. So Dr. Bob uh, Morrison, uh, they started the Morrison Swan House monitoring project in 2011. And since then, um, it monitored PERS. That's the in initial um uh, purpose. And uh, luckily or unluckily, in 2013, we were able to catch uh, the whole wave of PED in the U.S. When it hit it the first year, uh, it spread very rapidly to uh, about 30 states and um, affect almost 50% of rating herds. And that's how we measure it, right? And after about one and a half year, um, the epidemic uh, phase goes, and then we come to the endemic phase. And from 2015 until now, we're in the endemic uh, phase. So this is um, a background of, of how the U.S. producers are measuring uh, PED uh, or monitoring PED uh, in the country. And how about at the individual farm level? Um, so I, I, I have an outbreak at my sow farm and I want to eradicate it, right? Um, is there a measurement producers can use on how long it takes them to eradicate uh, to try and understand, okay, am I getting faster at eradication or am I getting slower? Am I staying the same? Yeah, so that is uh, what we're going to talk about. And the um, the number that we assess for this study, that is the time to stability. So time stability um, for in this study, the definition is how long or how many weeks uh, it takes a farm from a first week of PED outbreak to uh, the herd reach to a stable status. That is either two or two FVI. That means if the herd is uh, uh, taking the guilt field virus exposure and reach to stability with uh, negative PCR uh, uh, test result. 
So that is the time to stability and how we define in the study. And then uh, when we talk about time, time to stability in the U.S., there was a study published in 2016 by Dr. Uh, Dying Hudi and Dr. Bob Morrison, they focused on the epidemiology, uh, sorry, on the epidemic period. And the result is the median time stability was 28 weeks. So that is purely based on the epidemic period. Uh, what is happening afterwards? Because it was already 10 years past. So this is the objective of our study. So we want to understand how people are doing, how people are managing, how fast they're eliminating this PD from their herd. So that is uh, the objective. And we also want to uh, uh, estimate the or uh, the associated factors with the time to stability. When one would expect, you know, a measure like time to stability will get will will get big improvements early on, right? You know, uh, go, moving into the epidemic period, we'll move away from the twenty six week median timeline pretty quick. Uh, but once we make the big improvements, the next improvements are smaller and smaller, right? It becomes harder and harder to improve as you as you move forward because you've learned more. Um, Talk to us a little bit, Xiaomei, about the MSHIMP data. How does it allow us to assess the time of stability um, at the individual farm level and then also comparing other farms, aggregating the data and looking at farms across the entire United States? Yeah, uh, thank you, Clayton. So uh, as I mentioned, that MSHIM data, of especially for the PED, we monitor from the beginning of the PED emergence in the U.S. until now, so from 2030 until 2025. And when we further look at it, we uh, kind of like to separate the uh, both periods, uh, the epidemic period from 2013 to 2015 and the endemic period, 2015 until 2025. And when we look at the PED, a uh, number of PD breaks in both period. Um, in the epidemic period, we had uh, one, uh, sorry, 203 breaks. And in the endemic period, so the 10 years, we have in total 196 outbreaks. So in total, in the study, we analyzed 399 outbreaks. And that is from 269 herds in total. So this is the, um, the, the Amsham data that we analyzed. And further, uh, when we look at the time to stability between the epidemic period and endemic period, it was uh, the median is 24 weeks versus 13 weeks. And we find a significant difference between the 24 and 13. So this mention or give us the hint that, you know, our producers, you, Clayton, you are eliminating PED much faster than 10 years ago. When you calculate the time to stability, Xiaomei, um, so say the 13 weeks, the most recent number, is week 13 the first week that the farm is testing PCR negative or is week 13 the, the week where we have achieved enough weeks of negative tests in a row to have confidence that the farm has truly been successful in eradication? That's a great question, Clinton. So from Amshim, we got whatever the producer updated us the data. Ideally, uh, the 13 weeks would be that the uh, the herd that consecutively have PCR negative wind pig for four weeks. But uh, in the real life that, you know, we just received the data from our producer. We don't have um, how they test it and what is the accuracy. And, you know, but what we do know is PD is very hard to hide in the farm. This is the area. It's very hard to miss them. Yeah, so uh, that makes the time stability more uh, robust when we talk about this number. I think that's a really important point, Xiaomei. The MSHIM program is the best data set in the world for evaluating PERS management and PED management. There, there is nothing like it everywhere else in the world. And it's the envy of other producers. When I when I visit other countries, and I'm sure you know this, right? When I, when I show them the MSHIM data from the United States, the summary results, their floor. They're like, how do you know this? And I, and I, I give credit to the producers who participate. Certainly uh, the, the team that you have, the Schick team that helps support MSHIMP, there's a lot of people that contribute to it, but it's, it is producer driven and it's, it's the producer's willingness to share their data that makes all of this possible. But one limitation that we have to appreciate is, 
it's the MSHIM program is not prescriptive on saying, okay, everyone must test these samples, the same number, the same lab, the same PCR, the same way. So uh, it does make it a little bit dangerous to compare the metrics across systems, right? To say, okay, this system is eradicating a little faster than that one. Well, maybe their testing is not as sensitive, you know, or their sample numbers are not as high. But you bring up a good point that with PED, it doesn't hide very well. Um, with PED, you typically go from outbreak situation to no scours and no PED on the farm and fairly kind of like black and white between those two points. So I do think we can put a, a lot of uh, confidence in your evaluation that it's real, that, that we have not just gotten better at eliminating PED, but we have gotten much better. Um, and I think some of that is uh, we really don't see a, a lot of herds that go endemic. You know, we don't see a lot of herds that kind of like in the early days, maybe they would have PED for 40 weeks or 50 weeks because we just could not be successful with getting rid of it. Um, do you think that's a fair assessment? I mean, uh, am I oversimplifying that too much or do you think that is an OK way to look at that? No, I think Clinton, you raised a very uh, a few um, many important uh, factors. So first, you mentioned the system. There must be significantly difference between system or even between different farms in the one system. So in our study uh, in the model, we actually try to control this difference. We uh, put the random effect uh, in the model to control the each farm, and the farm will be nested in the system. So that's one how we uh, managed it, and then. Uh, also, uh, based on uh, you said, uh, endemic might not from uh, farm break uh, wise, but from more like national wise uh, compared to epidemic, the period, uh, the farm they are getting um, less occurrence for PD nationally. Yeah, but if we are looking at um, the farm level information, like we mentioned, uh, we use, we, we uh, estimate the factors associated with time to stability. And we do found if this farm has been break before within six months, or if this farm uh, break from two FVI status compared to the four uh, status four, so negative status, they will reach to stability faster. And another point is if this farm is larger, uh, like more than 5,000 cells, they will also uh, reach to stability lower, slower than those uh, that is less than 2,500 uh, cells. So this gives uh, uh, some other piece of information for our producers to consider from a farm level instead of the whole national level. Yeah. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. That's fantastic. Xiaomei, did you look at uh, the 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 occurrence of previous outbreaks at that farm and then their time to stability. And my question is, you know, do farms that, that break multiple times, farms that are having PED every few years, are they more successful at uh, elimination, eradication on the farm because they have practiced, you know what I'm saying, versus a farm that I haven't had PED in 10 years and I have to remember all of the, all of the ways that we get rid of PED and I maybe make some mistakes because I don't practice it as much. Were you able to look at that? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, as I mentioned, we use the six month as one because, you know, six months is really short, not from just the experience wise, but also from the immunity wise within the herd. But we also looking or looked at the farms that break within one year, two years, and three years, and we don't find a significant association between that to the time to stability. But the six months really helped. Yeah, immunity is a wonderful thing, right? You you can only get sick so often. Um, Xiao Mei, that is excellent information. It's uh, it's uh, unfortunately very useful for our industry right now because we've seen quite a bit of uh, PED show up in MSHIMP here in the most recent weeks. I really appreciate you, number one, doing the work and number two, sharing it with our audience. No, thank you so much, Clayton, for you as a pr practitioner and uh, also for inviting us. Yeah, we really appreciate all your contribution.
Yep. Well, you and the team at Minnesota, you get the opportunity to evaluate that MSHIP data regularly, you know, uh, as you work with Caesar and the team up there and you, you develop new ideas and new evaluations. We welcome you to come back on. Um, you know, we get to do this podcast, Xiaomei, because we've got a wonderful audience of people that are interested to learn. And so I should take some moment here to, to thank our audience. Um, uh, to the audience out there, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please like it, subscribe it, share it with a friend. That certainly helps the, the algorithm. It helps to get this message about pig health out to uh, all producers and veterinarians all over the world so we can collectively help do a better job of managing the health of our, our pigs and, and make the pigs very fun to raise for our people. For Dr. Xiaomei Yue, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. It's been our pleasure to have you on the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. Xiaomei, you've been a wonderful guest and we look forward to having you back again. We, uh, we appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You bet. Thanks to our audience and have a great rest of your day.